This would have been really great for Fred Ward. Mosley, homicide. What died? But the movie actually shifts the focus to Alec Baldwin's junior. And Detective Mosley becomes more of a secondary character versus the star as he is in the book. This is part of what I really think makes this flick work, with the villain being the protagonist and the cop being the antagonist. Who doesn't like to root for the bad guy sometimes? Rounding out the primary cast is Jennifer Jason Lee as Susie, the adorable, innocent hooker. Lee plays her role with poignance, and it really adds a layer of depth to the entire story, separating it from so many of the genre cliches that come to mind. You also get a little bit of Charles Napier, who's one of those great character actors you see in a hundred movies. He plays the police captain that Detective Hope Mosley answers to, and him and Fred Ward really play off each other really well. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, the guys at the station are gonna laugh their asses off at us in this year. <laughs> Your turn to notify next to Kim. No way! I did the fat lady that sat on a kid. That's good for two. I've already mentioned that the movie's sort of a role reversal with the criminal taking the spotlight. But they waste no time establishing that Baldwin's character is a total scumbag before they make you love him. The film features a montage of petty crimes being committed by Baldwin, who we later learn was just released from jail. Landing in Miami with a stolen identity, Baldwin is greeted by a Harry Krishna. If you don't know what a Harry Krishna is, they're like these pacifist religious hippies, and for some reason, they were always in airports in the 80s. I don't know, it was weird. Ours is actually the producer of the film, Edward Saxon, if you're into that kind of trivia. Baldwin snaps the Krishna's fingers just because, well, you know, like I said, he's a bad guy. My name's Ravindra. What's your name? Trouble. Ah! Well, this really kicks off the plot because the shock of it kills the Krishna. What should have just been simple assault is now murder, and here comes Detective Hope Mosley. Around the same time, our guy is calling in some tail, and Jennifer Jason Lee shows up. Here's where we learn a little bit about Alex Jr., who up to now is using the fake name Herman Gottlieb. It turns out Jr. isn't a total piece of shit as he checks ID on the sweet, innocent pepper to make sure she's not a kid. How old are you, anyway? Nineteen. And my name is Pepper. You got a driver's license on you, Pepper? So we have a hardened street thug with a heart of gold, a stereotypical Midwestern sweetheart turned prostitute to pay her way through school, and a haggard homicide detective hot on their trail. And this is all like seven minutes in. From here, things really get interesting. Mosley pretty quickly works through the available clues and tracks down Herman Gottlieb. Bet you're Herman Gottlieb. How much? 
Sergeant Hoke Mosley. Homicide. Herman Gottlieb. <laughs> I'd like to ask you a few questions routine. <laughs> Boy, you got a grip there, Herman. And he knows something is up. He just can't quite pin it down. Junior does not like this cop hot on his heels, so he has this balls out crazy solution. He follows Detective Mosley home and beats the out of him. He steals his gun, his badge, and his friggin' teeth. I guess he thinks this covers his ass somehow. I don't really know what his course of logic is here, but this guy is just hard as nails. Junior having a police badge is now the main plot of the film. From there, Baldwin starts impersonating a cop as a means to pull heists. He's running all over town, robbing gangsters, shooting stick-up perps, all kinds of crazy stuff. Open the goddamn door now! Do it! The gimmick of most of the movie is now Junior is playing a crooked cop with the real detective just a step behind on his own personal vendetta mission. Throughout his crime wave, a little hooker Susie keeps giving him the benefit of the doubt, hoping that he's changed his ways and that a white picket fence happy ending awaits them. You just, you get the impression that she's always had this rough shitty life with these rough shitty men and that all she wants is to be a better Lambs and Gardens housewife and raise some kids. This is what I was talking about before with Jennifer Jason Lee's performance and you just really wind up feeling for this character. I'd say the film really enters its final act when she realizes how badly she's being used and just decides she ain't gonna have no more of that shit. Here's where I'll start to trail off so I don't spoil the ending if you've never seen it. This is a really good movie and you should check it out Look it up, see if it's on some streamers. All the 80s cop cliches make it to the big climax, shootouts and fights and chases and all that fun stuff. When Mosley and Junior start their final confrontation, there is this great scene. Freeze, police! Freeze, police! This film was directed by George Armitage. Uh, he's probably best well known for Gross Point Blank with John Cusack. He hasn't directed a whole lot of movies, but I'm a big fan of his work. I really enjoy this movie. I think he gets sort of lost in the neon noir shuffle sometimes. Baldwin was far from unknown at the time, but it is a fairly early role for a guy who is now a really big star. And you don't really get to see him play an out and out villain all that often. We'll wrap things up with Chester's Checklist. You've got a heartthrob superstar, 80's actors galore, Jennifer Jason Lee's boobies, greasy pimps, Hawaiian shirt loose cannon cops, Krishna murder, finger foo, cop foo, fake cop foo, and machete foo. I give this flick four out of five chest stars. Be sure to check this one out.